if you really want to look at our nation its founding, look at our founding documents like the Declaration of Independence, you know, and it's like, wow, look, it says, you know, we're, you know, created equal by God and so forth. Yeah, we believe that we've been created by God. We believe that we are created with equality as humans, that God's not partial. But the God that Jefferson had in mind was not the biblical God. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And with me, as always, is the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California, Pastor Joe Shimon. How are we doing today? Great. Excited about uh, tackling this issue, brother. Yeah, I think this is uh, an important issue. You know, we do care about truth, and we're going to get right into that. And we actually have a clip for you today because recently, on May 2nd, Pastor Jack Hibbs of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, did a message, not actually in Chino Hills, but he did it in Washington, D.C., and he made a lot of claims in that message that had to do with some of the religious beliefs of the Founding Fathers, specifically about Thomas Jefferson. And in the clip we're about to play right here, he's going to make a lot of claims that we need to do a little bit of fact-checking on. And so, with this clip, you guys, hopefully we'll get a good understanding of what he is saying, and we are going to examine it in light of the evidence that we have. You know, in school, we learned that Jefferson was a deist, that Jefferson was uh, not religious, that Jefferson uh, was more of a scientist. He was into science. He wasn't into God. All that stuff is a bunch of progressive lies. It's false and not true. In fact, if you want to get a dose of hope, and freedom, and God, go to the Jefferson Memorial for crying out loud. It's incredible what Jefferson has to say about God. And for that matter, when somebody says, well, he's a deist, a lot of our founding fathers get that label placed upon them by people who do not believe in God, and they don't want to believe in God. And so they say things like that regarding our founding fathers to try to discredit that this is a Christian nation in its founding. Well, Joe, you heard a lot there. If you want to find hope and God, you just go over to the the Jefferson Memorial and you're going to see a ton of that. So not only that, but Founding Fathers, all of this, uh, is is this true? I mean, is all this just progressive and liberal lies concerning the Founding Fathers and specifically Jefferson? Well, there are a lot of lies about progressives who would like to eviscerate any memory of any kind of Christian influence in the nation. Uh, So there's an extreme that way, but there's I'm sorry, but uh, he is definitely pushing a, a very dangerous extreme on the other way by saying that this was a Christian nation. We were founded by, oh, there are Christians among them, I believe, but they're also deists for sure. Uh, a lot of Masons, you know, I mean, the first president, Washington, uh, was involved in, you know, early on in his life, Masonry and, 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 and Masonic ritual with regard to, well, I'm not going to get into Washington because we'll focus on Mason, but... I mean, if you really want to look at our nation, its founding, look at uh, our founding documents like the Declaration of Independence, you know, and it's like, wow, look, it says, you know, we're, you know, created equal by God and so forth. Uh, Well, yeah, we believe that we've been created by God and we believe that we are created with uh, equality as humans, that God's not partial, but uh, the God that Jefferson had in mind was not the biblical God. So just that, just, I mean, we can say, Let's say Mormons founded uh, founded this country, and we said, well, it was founded by Christians. We would say, no, those were Mormons. Jefferson wasn't a Christian, and we're not going to say that he is the one founder, but since they point to him so much, I mean, Barton, you know, who has done a lot of work with uh, this man uh, over and over again, I mean, he wrote a book called Jefferson's Lies, and that book was just highly tuned. It's got over 600 Amazon reviews. And it was about how these lies that the progressives say about Jefferson not being a Christian, he's trying to expose his lies and say, look, he was definitely a Christian. And he's a Dominionist, by the way, along with many others that run with these guys that a lot of them promote the seven mountain mandate. They talk about there'll be a civil war in the church. They talk about uh, the Christian church will take over the earth in some way. Many of them say it in different ways. But uh, it's interesting when you look at uh, what was going on there, because when the book was published, it was widely heralded in the homeschooling communities and Elsewhere, we homeschooled, you know, through our lifetimes, my wife and I. And I was really heartbroken because I was like, that book actually, the publishers, a Christian, well-known one of us, well-known Christian publishers had to pull it because they realized there was a lot of, there were lies about the so-called lies. And another publisher ended up picking it up later. 
So uh, my biggest concern, and I believe your concern as well, Chad, is that you have Christians taking their eyes off of the Great Commission, reaching the lost with the gospel, uh, preaching this idea that we can transform this nation into a Christian nation by pushing Christian morality. Uh, and uh, they're getting their eyes on this whole political, they're politicizing the gospel. You've seen that a lot with, not only with Jack Hibbs, but others. They're politicizing the gospel where they get the focus off of winning souls to winning the political, in the political realm. And we're all for voting. We're all for uh, voting for candidates that uh, promote righteousness and so forth. But we're not into promoting a lie that states that we're going to take over the world for Christ in some way and that we're going to save the world. Christ is the savior of our souls, but he's also the one that comes back and the scriptures say the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of Christ. Really quick story, a uh, brother of mine, he actually wrote a couple or did a couple of the videos, uh, Hollywood Unmasked, part one and two, Jason Kovar, awesome, awesome brother, awesome videos. If you haven't seen Hollywood Unmasked, uh, part one and two are both great. Part two is just absolutely amazing. It's a lot like they sold their souls, but from the Hollywood perspective and quite different than our Hollywood's War on God. So it's, you're not seeing the same thing. It's awesome. Uh, but Jason, when he's first coming to the church, he was caught up a bit in, you know, the founding fathers and, and you know, that they were Christians and the, the nation and so forth. And I prayed for him, you know. He was new in the fellowship that, you know, God would reveal to him uh, that because I see a lot of that when there's an overemphasis on the founding fathers and and then that can turn to dominionism. Jason was a dominionist. He was a younger believer in the Lord. I, I, and guess what? He came to me. He goes, Joe, I had this crazy dream. I'm like, what? He goes, there are all these people in the church, not our church, but at church, and they were all like yelling in unison, Jefferson, Jefferson, Jefferson. And like, I think that was maybe prophetic <laughs> because uh, that's what we're seeing now in the church. And I whipped out my Jefferson Bible, uh, which I don't own for devotional purposes, but for <laughs> yeah. apologetic type purposes. And I showed him where he rips out all these miracles. He rips out the miracles of Jesus. Uh, and... And it's really, really heartbreaking. So there's a lot of really, I call it the butcher's Bible. Yeah, no, I think that's that's a good point. And one of the things we wanted to point out too, uh, when it comes to Jack Hibbs specifically, while he is in line with Calvary Chapel teaching typically, right, which is from the pre-trib rapture position. And the thing is, is that he, right there with Jan Markell, was talked about the NAR, the New Apostolic Reformation, in his church, these dominionists. But then has events at his church where Shayon, yeah. I mean, one of the leaders uh, Dominionist, yeah. of the NAR movement, Shayon calls him a good friend and puts in videos on, what it, what is it, more political nonsense that he was propagating at his church. So that's why Mixed this is dangerous. Sure. And this is not our first time talking about Jack Hibbs. And I would say one of the reasons is because I, I know I used to listen to Jack and think, wow, he's really sound. He's got some good stuff. I had some differences because he did a, a message on James 5, 19 and 20 and absolutely butchered that text. And so I didn't listen to him anymore. But nonetheless, I didn't think of him as going off the deep end like this. Yeah. And and honestly, this is dishonest. That's what I see. And and, it, and it's dishonest. And I don't know if Barton has convinced him of something or whether or not he's not really done his due diligence. But this was not factual. That's well, my point. Barton, speaking of dishonesty, he's had at his fingertips the very primary sources of some of a lot of Jefferson's statements and his denials of who Jesus Christ really is. Uh, unless you can claim that someone who believes in a different Jesus, a different gospel, uh, doesn't believe in the God of the Bible, believes the Bible is a hackney job and it's that the Bible's poop, which is what uh, basically Jefferson, we'll get into those quotes later, believed about the Bible that he had to extract the diamonds from the poop. And we'll get into that. Unless you believe someone could believe that and that they're a Christian, but you're believing them to be a Christian is actually unbiblical. Uh, the scriptures say not to add or take away. Deuteronomy 4, 2, you shall not add to the word which I am commanding you or take away from it. Uh, Deuteronomy 12, 32, whatever I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add or take anything away from it. Revelation 22, 18, 19, you add to the uh, this book, the book of the prophecy in that specific sense. Uh, he will add to you the plagues that are written in the book. And I guess that would entail eternal torment, which Jefferson uh, denied hell as well. And, and it goes on to warn not to take away from the scripture. So it's interesting because Jefferson actually uh, says this in regard to the Gospels. Now, in the place where we, we he was crucified, there was a garden. Now, this is how the Jefferson Bible ends. 
because he puts the gospels together, does like a harmony of the gospels, but he rips out the miracles, rep, rips out every reference to Christ's deity, uh, the, the, anything that would uh, lend to the, tr the triunity of God as, as well. Now he says, in the place, and this is how he ends his Bible, where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new sepulcher. He says, wherein was never a man laid. Okay, that's taken right out of the Bible. There they laid Jesus and rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher, sepulcher and departed, end quote. Now, that's the scripture he's taking, but that's, that's how he ends it. There's no resurrection because he didn't believe in the resurrection of Christ. He believed that Jesus was just a really extraordinary human being, much like many of the Gnostics believed. Paul warns in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, he tells us what the gospel is, and he warns that they could be that they're not to deviate from their trust in the gospel, which includes not only his death, but the resurrection of Christ on the third day. In 2 Corinthians, he warns, uh, or in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 through 4, he warns about a different Jesus, different gospel, a different spirit. Galatians 1, 6 through 9, he warns about a different gospel as well. Well, he has a different Jesus, he has a different gospel, he has a different spirit, he has a different everything. Uh, in fact, Paul says, if Christ be not raised, our, our faith is in vain, 1 Corinthians 15, 14, and 17. He definitely had a different Jesus. Uh, in a conversation with Benjamin Rush, who he writes some really nasty letters to regarding his cultic beliefs, which we'll get into, he says that uh, he believes in uh, that uh, he believes in pure deism. So for him, to, for Hibbs to say, "Oh, it's a progressive lie that he was a deist," uh, he, he omitted uh, Jesus' deity for sure. Uh, and you know, Jesus said before Abraham was, "I am." John eight fifty eight. John in John eight twenty four, he says, "If you don't believe that I am, you will die in your sins." Jefferson refers to the Holy Spirit's writings as nonsense. Uh, in fact, he says, in extracting the pure principles which he taught, we should have to strip off the artificial vestments, talk about from the Bible, in which they have been muffled by priests who have tra uh, travestied them in various forms as instruments of riches, of power to them. We must dismiss the Platonists and the Stargerites and the Gamaliels and the Eclectics and the Gnostics and the scholastics and the logos and the demiurgs and the eons and the and the daemons, male and female, with a long train of etc. 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 Shall I say at once, not of nonsense. So he's calling the scripture nonsense. Uh, you might want to read that quote where he yeah. talks about calls it another term. Yeah, and and in, in another letter, uh, it was Thomas Jefferson to William Short, who was actually Jefferson's private secretary. This letter was written on October thirty first, eighteen. 19 and not only does it start out specifically saying that he is and he is an epicurean yeah. by the way if you want to know anything about epicurean philosophy you just look up epicurious and epicurious is the one who came up with what we now call the logical problem of evil at least as we know it it's still passed around uh, a lot of, it's been absolutely thwarted by most modern day philosophers even church fathers don't hold defeated to it. it yeah church yeah. fathers defeated it obviously the uh, Irenaeus had a theodicy as as well, and and Epicurean philosophy it is very deistic in the in the way that it, it operates in its understanding, and it is very non relational. That's the point of Epicurus's uh, argument against uh, the one true God, a theistic is, personal God, yeah, it, because he's not theistic, he's not personal, he's not all good, not all loving, and so forth. And read Acts seventeen. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. No, 100%. I, and I didn't even get into that because in Acts chapter 17, Paul specifically goes, and we all know Acts 17 is Mars Hill, but right there, before we get into his argumentation, it tells us who he goes against. Yeah. The Epicureans and, and the Stoics. Yep. Both of which, by the way, in this letter, both of which, Mr. Uh, Thomas Jefferson here loves their doctrines yeah. and their teachings. Okay, but one of the things that it says specifically about Jesus of Nazareth, by the way, it calls uh, the the depraved religion of his home country, that he was a reformer of the depraved relig religion of his own country. Very interesting, you think of Jack Hibbs as a big uh, fan of Israel, you know, and yet depraved religion of his home country. That's what it says. But then it says this, abstracting what is really Hewis from the rubbish in which it was barely, buried, Easily distinguished by its luster from the dross of his biographers. Yes, Matthew, Mark, Mark Luke, Luke, John. John yep. All right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And as separable from that as the diamond from the dunghill. Guys, that is literally talking about extracting Jesus, and it's exactly what he did, by the way. Extracting Jesus 
from the dunghill that are the Gospels, the very word of Christ, the scriptures, the graphe, that's what he says. So you want some encouragement? I'm telling you right now, don't go to Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, in fact, he says right before that, I performed this operation for my own use, although he said also that he wanted to be distributed to the Indians at one point prior to this, by cutting verse by verse out, and he did cut verses out, you know, of the printed book and arranging the matter, which is evidently his, uh, meaning what he thinks is Jesus' words, uh, which is as easily distinguished as, as Chad, you said, a diamond's in a dunghill. So he's basically calling the Bible, the Word of God, a pile of poop, words inspired by the Holy Spirit. And he's also taking a lot of Jesus' teachings, which he's leaving out. He's also talk, taking Jesus' teaching that he's also saying is part of that dunghill. This is not a Christian, you know? Can you imagine if, if uh, you know, Obama had done that? <laughs> yeah. Would Christians be saying, oh, this guy, Obama, he's great, and he's a Christian. If, if Biden just came out with his version of the Bible and cut all these verses out and called it a dunghill and say, now I'm extracting the diamonds based on his own personal interpretation, he just happens to know what the diamonds are in this book. Everybody, Every Christian would be saying, that's wicked, that's demonic. And guess what? It is wicked, it's demonic, and guess what? Mm -hmm. Jefferson was wicked and demonic. I'm sorry, that's reality. Jesus is first for us, man. His word is first. His word is the word of God breathed by the Holy Spirit. It's disgusting that he would say that. He also called it nonsense. Uh, Jefferson writes to William Short on August 14th, 1820. Listen to what he says. First, a groundwork of vulgar ignorance, talking about the Bible, of things impossible, of superstitions, fanaticisms, and fabrications. What evidence does he have for that? Absolutely zero. His letter to John Adams, who, by the way, was a Unitarian, uh, Unitarians denied the Trinity. They denied uh, not only the Trinity, but many of them denied the preexistence of the, of Christ. They denied uh, the soul, not all of them. Joseph Priestley, who was a popular uh, Unitarian then and a very good friend of uh, Thomas Jefferson's, denied, he actually debated another Unitarian because uh, he took the materialistic side, saying the soul didn't exist. And that was a Unitarian church when he was in the area in, in, in Pennsylvania that Jefferson would visit his friend Priestley. Uh, and had a lot of talks and a lot of letters to him where he agreed with his doctrine. In fact, he says in his letter to John Adams, a Unitarian, uh, where did we get the Ten Commandments? The book indeed gives them to us verbatim, talking about the Bible. But where did we get them? The whole history of these books, talking about the books in the Bible, is so defective and doubtful that it seems vain to attempt a minute inquiry into it. And as such, which is really good, easy way to just throw it off and say, I'm not going to deal with it. And such tricks have been played in their texts. So the Bible is filled with trickery now that we have the right uh, from the cause to entertain much doubt that parts of them are genuine. In the New Testament, there is, as talk most about the Old Testament there, he says, in the New Testament, there is internal evidence that parts of it have proceeded from an extraordinary man. Talking about Jesus, just an extraordinary man, though. So don't think, oh, he called our Jesus an extraordinary man. People get all excited when some cultist says something good about Jesus. But when they deny his deity, that's not the Jesus of the Bible. And the Bible warns about the demons inspiring such false gospels and false Jesuses. He says, an extraordinary man, and that other parts are of the fabric of very inferior minds. So now he calls the, the apostles very inferior minds, the prophets inferior minds, and so forth. Uh, again, uh, to and according to this is according to Andrew uh, Holichak in his Thomas Jefferson's Bible, and it's in the introduction with the critical commentary. Listen to what he states. He says uh, he says that the Gospels he treats them with two different ways as far as to what he uh, deselects and what he keeps in the Gospel accounts. He says, "quote One in the introduction to the Jefferson Bible, all passages at variance with the laws of physical nature are to be deselected." And he's being influenced by Hume and the Enlightenment yep. and so forth. And uh, he's just a non-believer, guys. I mean, he just did away with the virgin birth, you know? He just did away with the resurrection of Christ. He just did away with all these things, okay? And number two, he says, all passages inconsistent with a historical character, here Jesus, based on satisfactory testimony, are to be deselected. A final illustration is Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 and 35, and that's where Jesus says, don't think that I can be peace on the earth, peace on the earth, but a sword, a man's foes shall be they of his own household, mother against daughter, mother law against daughter, and so forth. In other words, when Jesus wasn't presented as this Gumby that he wanted to just have some morals that he could control the nation with and make sure they were following some morality so there would be some vigor and some spine in our country, because he knew, Satan loves to do that. Satan will use, as long as Satan can get you not to worship Jesus, but a different Jesus, he'll take different forms of morality because he wants to damn your soul is the, ult is the ultimate... Uh, cause there. So here we see the basis for what he was doing was based on, hey, not believing in miracles. So he takes out Jesus' miracles. Uh, there's very few miracles in the, 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 the Harmony of the Gospels. He doesn't show any of 
think Jesus' miracles, especially the resurrection, and then anything that he was inconsistent with his Gumby Jesus that he forms in the image that he would have liked to have uh, believed that Jesus actually had existed. Now, he says as president, he expresses uh, these sentiments to, uh, while he's president now, to Joseph Priestley, and he writes, quote, the Christian religion, when divested of the rags in which they have enveloped it and brought to it the original purity and simplicity of its benevolent institutor, is a religion of all others most friendly to liberty, science, and the uh, the fast expansion of the human mind. You know, so here again, you know, I was calling rags and you know, dung and nonsense and all these different things. And, and you know what? Even the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses don't do that typically. I mean, the Mormons play it down like the Mohammedans, you know, the Muslims, but <laughs> yeah, you it's know, crazy. You know, it's interesting, even in the, even in that same teaching that Hibbs gave, he minimized the, the fact that he had slaves. He said, well, he was an abolitionist, but he wasn't against and wasn't an abolitionist of sleeping with his slaves. Yeah. I mean, how can you attempt to whitewash that sort of history in your message? Don't even mention it as you're talking about how great Jefferson was. This man was so amazing. You want hope. You want you want to be encouraged. You want God. Go over to the Jefferson Memorial because there'll be quotes about him. By the way, do you know who else quoted the scriptures extensively? The Gnostics. In fact, entire yeah, sections right. of Against Heresies by Irenaeus are refuting over and over again texts that are used by Gnostics. And what is the Jefferson Bible other than his own interpretation, his own canon of scripture, a deistic version? Of the canon yeah. of scripture. Yeah. And here he is. You have a man who is claiming to be a Christian on some level. Uh, and he, as you mentioned, he's committing adultery against his wife. And number two, which is really the worst thing, the adultery is hor horrifying, but he's abusing someone that's enslaved to him, that's like making work for him, that's been, you know, he inherited from his, his, his ancestors or his relatives. And he's having sex with him. We know Sally Hemings, uh, her descendants have his unique chromosomal makeup, his DNA, which is unique to him, by the way, than other Jeffersons because of the chromosomal makeup. And uh, so, uh, but you know what, it, with Barton and the Jefferson lies and say, no, he was a Christian and so forth. It, it, it makes sense why he would embrace like Glenn Beck, who has a lot of new age type beliefs, really diabolical beliefs, and is also a Mormon and consider him a brother and do work with him because we're dealing with a counterfeit kingdom. Brothers and sisters, this is what you need to understand. This is a counterfeit kingdom. When the Antichrist comes, he'll sit in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. He won't be an atheist. He'll say, I'm God. And guess what? The scriptures tell us that the false prophet that caused people, caused people to worship him will look like a lamb, but he'll speak like a dragon. In other words, he'll claim to represent Christianity in some way and, and ex accept Christianity because Satan wants to bring everybody into the tent, but he'll deny true, genuine Christianity, the true Jesus Christ of the scripture. And that's what that's why this is so dangerous is because these guys are politicizing the gospel and they're setting, I believe, people up for the counterfeit kingdom because you said there'll be false Christ and false prophets that will deceive many. And it, it's heartbreaking when we see where this is all going. In his letter to, to uh, William Short, he wrote this. The established, this was uh, 1031, 1819, the establishment of the innocent and genuine character of this benevolent moralist, talking about Jesus, now he's the benevolent moralist, uh, and the rescue of it from the imputation of imposture. So the Christian, the, the, what the disciples, the apostles wrote about, that's an imposture. I somehow know the truth about who he really was, which is ridiculous, which has resulted from the artificial systems, artificial systems invented by ultra-Christian sects, unauthorized by a single word ever uttered by him, is a most desirable object. Wow. So when Jesus told them that the Holy Spirit would lead them into all truth and that they would they would actually bring his teachings to others through the scripture, that that was not an authorization. And by the way, there's an asterisk by uh, artificial systems. And these are Jefferson's, this is Jefferson's note, okay? I did check that out. This is Jefferson's note that he leaves uh, in reference to what he just stated. The immaculate conception of Jesus. That's false, he says. His deification, him being God, that's false. The creation of the world by him, that's false, he says. His miraculous powers, those are false. His resurrection and visible ascension, Jefferson says that's false. This is written by him. Uh, his corporal presence in the Eucharist, well, that's a Catholic teaching. That one he actually got right, okay, <laughs> that, that the Eucharist becomes Jesus, the bread. The Trinity, he says that's false. Original sin, he says that's false. Well, if you consider the Calvinistic view of original sin, that everybody is born uh, 
in, such, in a state of damnation to where babies die and they go to hell, he'd be right. But if he's talking about us being born in such a way where we inherit a sinful nature, just look at little babies in the nursery, you know there's a sinful nature going on there, he'd be wrong. Atonement, Jesus' death on the cross. He says that is an artificial system. Regeneration, meaning born again, artificial system. Election, artificial system. Orders of the hierarchy, etc. That's Jefferson's actual note. You know, it's so interesting, you know, because we, we've been talking a lot. You know, it's the time of Ramadan. Actually, I think this is the last night of Ramadan right now. And when you talk to Muslims on the street, one of the things they'll say is like, we believe in Jesus. Yeah, same deal. And you know what they'll deny? Death, deity, resurrection. Those are the three things yep. that every Muslim must deny. Death, deity, and resurrection. And what is he denying here? By little note there, different God, Islam, Trinity. <laughs> yeah, amen. Same, same, same conclusion, Chad. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, different Jesus for sure to Dr. Benjamin Rush in his letter, 421, 1803. He says, I am a Christian. Good timing for you to state that. Uh, in, only, in only one sense in which he wished anyone to be. So he's saying, I'm a Christian. The only sense that Jesus really wanted us to be Christians, sincerely attached to his doctrines in preference to all others, ascribing to himself every human excellence. He's just a man for him. He's a great man. And believing he never claimed any other. I mean, he's saying that Jesus never claimed to be God. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Revelation chapter one, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. Right after, before he says that, he says, I am the first and the last. There's Oh, and by the way, Isaiah 44, verse 6 says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and last. Beside me there is no God. So only God can say I'm the first and last. Jesus definitely claimed to be God. In an 1821 letter he wrote, When we shall have done away with the incomprehensible jargon, now it's jargon, of the Trinitarian arithmetic, that three are one and one is three, when we shall have knocked it down, the artificial scaffolding reared to mass from the view, the simple structure of Jesus, when, in short, we shall have unlearned everything which we have been taught since his day and got back. Well, he admits it goes back to his day because he admits that the apostles said such things. Uh, he says, then we'll be, pure, we'll be worthy of being his disciples and so forth. So this is absolutely mind-boggling. Letter to James Smith, I confidently expect that the present generation will see Unitarianism become the general religion of the United States. So this is what he wants. He wants this idea where we can take Jesus' morals so they can strengthen the nation because he knows that'll do that. But we can jettison the Jesus of the Bible. He wrote Not a, a good similar thing to John either. Adams. Right. And I'll just, I know we've only got a couple minutes <laughs> a left. A minute, yeah. But uh, the famous Unitarian Universalist website, which is the, the famous Unitarians, it extols him and says basically, and I'll sum it up. It says, his work, the Jefferson Bible, was a Unitarian theology. They state that after saying all these wonderful things about how he was basically, uh, you know, would go to Unitarian churches when he was there. Uh, so uh, I guess probably one of the best things to close on would be uh, that he extolled the teachings of, guess who? Weishaupt, Adam Weishaupt, who was the founder of the Illuminati. You could just type in, and we don't believe all the theories that are strung together by a lot of people about the Illuminati. This is Illuminati, that's Illuminati. But guess what? Just go to Wikipedia, even the liberal Wikipedia, the first little paragraph will tell you he was the founder of the Illuminati, okay? And it's interesting when you think about that because he extols him in a letter. He goes, da-da-da. He writes about uh, how Jesus was a philosopher and that the German philosopher Adam Weishaupt, he says, is among those, he says, who believe in the definite perfectibility of man. Perfectibility of man. Where's this going? Weishaupt, he says, believed and promoted the perfection of the human character uh, was to the, ob be, uh, the object of Jesus Christ and so forth. And he it was... He taught that Jesus brought liberty and that he is our grand master, grand master, Jesus of Nazareth. This is where they're going, guys. The perfectibility of man that we could do it. We could pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. We can bring in this, this kingdom and man can be the center. It's a counterfeit kingdom and there's a spirit behind it. Even Jefferson, um, it's a reality. Just look at it, guys. This is where this is going. It's a false form of Christianity that follows the founding fathers into this mess. And guess what? I'm telling you right now, stick to Jesus. He said when he comes, then the kingdoms of this world become the kingdom of Christ. Revelation 11, 15. We don't bring in the kingdom. We win people out of the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of Christ, which is the narrow road. He comes and establishes kingdom on earth. We pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. We look to Jesus, our Lord and Savior, not to Thomas Jefferson. Jesus, 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 not Jefferson, Jefferson, Jefferson. Amen.